before. Is that right? Yes, uh, Michael Latour, uh, Land County Probation. Okay. Ms. Deanuntis, is the state deferring? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I'll hear Mr. Latour. Go ahead. Okay, Your Honor, uh, in front of you is Sarah Smith. Uh, uh, the BOP was originally heard on October 4th, uh, 2019. At that time, it was postponed to 2 14 2020 where Mrs. Smith uh, failed to appear. A bench warrant was issued and uh, the warrant was executed on March 8th, 2020. Uh, and then she ended up in Atlantic County Jail. Well, uh, Judge, uh, within that time frame of the postponement, uh, Ms. Smith was charged with a new uh, charge. Uh, she was charged with uh, hindering the false information, and she was also charged with uh, identity crime impersonating value under 500. However, Judge, it should be noted that that charge was transferred to the prosecutor's office on 3-9 and uh, assigned a file number, but it was uh, admin, admin, administratively dismissed on 3-12-20. Uh, but just to let you know, she did pick up a charge during the time of postponement. Uh, during the time of postponement, also, Ms. Smith failed to report as directed on February 12, 2020. Uh, judge, uh, substance of the uh, postponement was for her to uh, engage in treatment. Uh, during that postponement time on 2-3-20, Ms. Smith was unsuccessfully discharged from John Brooks Recovery Center. Uh, due to what they say was continued drug use. Uh, she was referred to a detox and was to transition into long-term inpatient treatment at that time. Uh, as of the writing of this addendum, uh, she has not done so. All right, probation's recommendation is drug court. Is that right? Oh, yeah, Judge, if you want to cut through, because uh, there, yeah, there's many charges against her, but if we go right to the recommendation, uh, Judge, uh, our recommendation was would be for the client to apply for drug court. Uh, if she's not eligible or not interested in drug court, uh, then probation would recommend that uh, if the client is found guilty of the violation, uh, she'd be sentenced to a term of incarceration in your honor's discretion. And uh, at the end of that term, that probation be terminated without improvement. Okay, and she's on probation for a third degree offense. Is that right? Uh, Judge, I, I have limited paperwork on me. I just have the, the addendum document. Uh, let me check on... Now, let's assume that that's accurate and that you can check while you while you talk to me but the, uh, assuming it's a third degree and assuming I find her guilty of having violated her probation and if she doesn't want drug court then I have up to five years New Jersey State Prison on the table for Miss Smith is that right oh that is correct that would be the high presumptive on a third degree okay well, let me hear Mr. Aguilar Mr. Aguilar, I don't, I don't mean to cut you short, but the question I have is, is she interested in drug court? She's interested in treatment, Your Honor. My understanding is that uh, she has already uh, engaged herself in medically assisted treatment at the uh, county jail and that upon her release, uh, she is scheduled to continue that treatment. Um, I well, that didn't work out before for, uh, for Ms. Smith. So I guess at this particular point, you know her 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 choices are her her choices are drug court or her choice is drug court or we can talk about a state prison sentence. What the, I know that you're at a disadvantage because you can't talk to her, but uh, I, I'm not inclined to release her to the street you know, so that she can follow uh, her own course of treatment because that didn't work before. And so. Um, does she want to fill out a drug court application? Well, Judge, uh, she may very well, but uh, I brought a motion uh, to have her released on bail, Your Honor. I wasn't quite prepared to address the VOP on the merits 
quite frankly, one of the reasons that I brought this application because it was because a violation of probation, was, oh, excuse me, was not uh, scheduled until the end of the month. Uh, and the, uh, I'm not going to give her an ROR on a VOP where she can't remain law abiding and appears to be continuing to use drugs. If I let her hit the street, she's going to continue her criminal activity and she's going to continue to use. She needs drug court. Her own treatment plan isn't isn't working. She's got a VOP scheduled for the, the 20th. Uh, yeah, I believe that that's the case, Your Honor. If, if I could just suggest to the court uh, that perhaps the court could release her, allow her to do what she says that she wants to do, and then have her come back uh, on the scheduled day. Okay, well, I, 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 go ahead. Uh, the, the situation is this, Your Honor. Uh, she is on probation for a possession of CDS charge, a third degree offense. Right. That's her only indictable conviction. Uh, the charges that were incurred by a defendant um, uh, that the, the probation has mentioned, uh, as the probation mentioned, those have been um, apparently uh, dismissed. So there are no, no pending charges against her, Your Honor. Uh, and I think under those circumstances, it would be appropriate to release her to continue treatment on her own, Your Honor, because of the, uh, I would suggest to the court. Uh, Do you hear Mr. Latour? Evidently, she was discharged from treatment because she yeah. couldn't stay off of drugs. Yeah, that, that was uh, within the discharge. And, and just to correct the record, Your Honor, she does have a pending charge. Uh, Omar, the uh, uh, counselor, uh, the charge that I mentioned dismissed, I didn't get to the whole laundry list of charges. There is still an active charge that's pending. Uh, it was a uh, possession case and a uh, possession of a hypodermic syringe and a hindering, given false information. Uh, like many of those cases now, they did get remanded, but that does have an active court date. So she does have an active uh, ACS matter, an active criminal matter. And uh, uh, also, Judge, just for the record, as you may have the document, there's a there's just a cavalcade of self-reported relapses that have indicated ongoing drug use, and uh, I'm kind of in agreement that uh, to to release her on her own recognizance and for her to follow her own plan uh, would would be folly at this time. Okay, all right. I reviewed the record and the application for for I'm an ROR for an ROR. Mr. Aguilar. I've considered your argument and I'm not letting her out. But I'm not, I'm not, for an ROR is denied. If you want to get to the jail and get her a drug court application, she'll be tasked and she'll be given a, a level of treatment. Uh, but I'm, I, I, I'm not your letting Honor, I, With all due respect, Your Honor, I don't think that the court uh, allowed me to continue my, my, my the argument. Judge, the reason that I brought this, this motion is because of uh, the, the public health uh, crisis. That okay, I've considered that counselor and I know that you want to talk more, but I'm not going to let you. The application's denied. We're off the record. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, the safety of the community. And because of that, we ask that this defendant remained detained. Judge Cunningham did consider everything and found that he should be detained for the safety of the community. Well, Ms. Linehan says that he's PTI eligible. I mean, were there discussions about PTI? Yeah, Your Honor, I'm sorry. If That's I, okay. I'm, I'm, let me hear from Ms. Dianuntis and I'll, okay. I'll go back to you, Ms. Linehan. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Your Honor, he, he would be PTI eligible with um, compelling circumstances he would have to submit and he does have a second degree charge which was possession of a weapon in conjunction with a drug offense but, but I, I think Ms. Linehan told me that you guys were in the process of of, of, of working this out I, I did prepare an accusation for the other case your honor however he would still have to apply to PTI and would have to be accepted, which is not something that I'm in control of. All right. I mean, let, let, let's assume for the moment that we were, were 
in regular court under regular circumstances, and the discussions had gone to the point where the state was prepared to prepare an accusation, he was prepared to plead to the accusation and apply to PTI. Is that right? Ms. Dianuntas, I'm still talking to you. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, if I could um, come in, I'm PTI director. He would have to get compelling reasons submitted and okayed by the PTI prosecutor prior to application. Once he's allowed to apply and the report is written, he would have to plead to the second plea, make, enter into a plea agreement. All right, Ms. Linehan, I guess I'm back to you. Go ahead. Judge, the second degree alleged he was given a summons on it. It, it involved um, a marijuana offense. Uh, where there's an allegation that he had possessed with intent to distribute marijuana, and apparently he had a pocket knife in his possession. So that's the nature of the second degree charge, sir, and he was left on his liberty on that. He did pick up these new charges, a contempt situation with his mother. Um, that is, that's what he was detained on. His mother has dropped the restraining order. Um, I, I don't know that the second degree charge on the earlier case would even survive uh, presentment to the grand jury. I don't have the discovery on that, but Ms. Dianuntis and I were at the point where I know I would have to plead him on the domestic violence case um, to get him in, and we would make application. I don't understand why an 18-year-old is required to continue in, in custody when what we're looking at ultimately is PTI or probation. So given the health situation at this time, he's already been in custody since December. Uh, December, January, February, we're at the end of March. He's got four months in. Um, He's got a stable living address. He doesn't have ties to any other jurisdiction. Um, he was in RSP drilling status with the National Guard. He's uh, presently accounted for. He would not, of course, be shipping out to any training, and he's going to have to deal with that situation. So there's, um, he could be monitored in the community. He has a safe place to live, um, and conditions can be put on him that would guarantee the safety of the community. His mother was the victim um, in the case that was brought to the grand jury that quickly. Um, she does not wish to proceed. She has dropped the final restraining order. I know that doesn't control, but it usually has an effect on the outcome of the case. So, again, we're looking at a young man who's PTI or probation eligible, um, and I'm, I'm simply asking for his release, considering the fact that the courts are more or less at a standstill. All right. I mean, I guess I asked the questions about what would we do if this were a, a, a normal day and if Mr. Donahue were in, in front of me and essentially if we were able to put together the, um, uh, the paperwork, it, it would still require compelling reasons and a decision from the PTI people as to whether Mr. Donahue could even apply is what I understand. Is a, a very a young, um, does appear to have a family oriented type issues where the victim was, was his mother. At, at the same time, um, victims decide not to pursue restraining orders for a number of, of reasons, and sometimes it doesn't mean that uh, they don't have concerns about the, about the um, alleged um, uh, uh, aggressor, and it doesn't necessarily mean that um, uh, they feel safe. I understand that he is Living circumstances have uh, resolved, but there's just too many moving parts, and that's no fault of Mr. Donahue and certainly not Ms. Ms. Linehan. But I, I, I can't make a finding, and I'm not going to make a finding, that the circumstances have sufficiently uh, changed um, uh, to allow his release. Ms. Linehan, I'm denying your application. Luke, I can go off the record. Thank you.